just bow down our hearts in prayer. Lord, it's because of the shed blood of our Lord Jesus that we, speaking different languages and dialects, can have fellowship together in thy holy name in this manner. We give you the glory, we give you the honor. We thank you for the founders of this nursing school named Bethesda. Thank you for the students who were trained here, who passed out from here. Thank you for the faculty members, the management committee, who had taken pains to see that the students here were city on the Lord's day. We had been hearing testimony, choruses and songs of praise from dear brothers and sisters. Now Lord, as we meditate upon your holy word, I need your heavenly presence, your heavenly revelation that every word that is coming out may be inspired by the by the forces of darkness and keep us in one mind. Strangle me and reveal to me what you want to speak to my dear students here. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. It's a great joy to have fellowship in this manner. Other worldly gatherings cannot give the same kind of happiness that singing together songs of praise can give. I would like to speak about integrity today. Integrity, dictionary says, is something bound together, put together, something integrated. We hear about integrity of the state, integrity of the country. It's being whole. Nursing is a very challenging profession which requires lots of integrity. You'll be facing pressures from the bureaucracy, from your, if some of you may be working in uh, private clinics data, from your employers, you'll be facing pressure. Whatever the pressure, as Christian nurses, I want you to cultivate the spirit of integrity. Professional integrity, being whole in conducting oneself. What you think, what you do should be integrated. For example, we Christian tribals of Northeast India, we have got our own compulsions. We have traditional practices, traditional way of preparing food, traditional taste. Okay, we are willing to uh, forego, do away with every other tradition. But during Christmas time, the tradition of uh, merry making, of having food together, we cannot do it away in a particular village. During Christmas time, the villagers said, we will contribute this much amount, every house will contribute this much. We'll buy a mitun, seal, enjoy meat for two, three days. So they bought a big mitun. The mitun was tied against a post, wooden post. On 24 December, the best shooter in the village was to shoot it with a gun, to shoot it down. But as it happened, the shooter missed the forehead of the mitun and the rope in which the mitun was tied was broken. So the mitun, a part of the mitun's skin was also, blood was shed on the part of the mitun. A party hit. So Mithun ran away towards Burma border. The villagers keep chasing, chasing, following the Mithun, but 
till this time, till 6, 7 p.m., they could not find. They came back, the village council had a meeting. What shall we do? We could not find a meeting. So the chief of the village said, Christmas postponed. <laughs> The Bible clearly says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But we cannot uh, we can we cannot follow the that Bible words in letter and spirit. At times in Hindi is called Adatsi Mazbur. We cannot do away with our habit, habitual thing. Integrity means just to be consistency. Christian principles are laid out in the Bible. Christian ethics are there, nursing ethics are there. In whatever situation you are, you have to follow the Christian ethics, nursing ethics, which is in tune with the Bible too. Professional ethics. There should be trust, but in performing your duty, if it so happens that uh, there is conflict, in your conscience. Some of you may be pressurized to go for, to conduct an abortion later when you take up your profession. So were the midwives in the Bible. In Exodus chapter 1 verse 17, <coughs> after the seven, the people in Egypt had a parable who did not value the, the things done by Joseph. In Joseph's time, Jews, Jewish people were given some respect because of him. But in Exodus chapter 1, 1 uh, 16, and he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew woman, and see them upon the stools. If it, it, it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall leave. Butchery of male children, male newly borns. That was the order of the king, a decree. But what did the midwives do? They feared God. They didn't follow what Pharaoh said. But the midwives, verse 17, fear God, did not as the king of Israel commanded them, but saved the male children, men children alive. God gave them the wisdom to make excuse to. They say the Hebrew uh, woman was so strong, they delivered before we reached the spot. Somehow, God's grace was working and they were not harassed, not punished. So, not only abort, uh, killing children, not only aborting, so many other things are there in medical profession. I'm also the chairman of Nas uh, NRHM, it's called National Rural Health Mission for our district. So, here and there we also have so many meetings and the DC has to play a role in national health too. Our government is so kind, so good, that it wants to improve the average health of the citizens of India. When good health is there, what do we gain? <coughs> People can work harder, life longevity is increased. So national, gross national product will also increase. Sick people cannot work, weak people cannot work, so nurses can also play a big role in building up national health, average national health. When we talk about nursing, we remember the lady with the lamb. You know who she is? Nightingale. Florence Nightingale. A wonderful lady. Even nurses day is held every year in her honor, I think. Who was she? She was an English lady, born in 12 May 1820. She died in August 1910. 
she lived for quite um, about nine years. As a serial former, she sought to fame. People came to know about her during the Crimean War. Crimea is near the Black Sea, somewhere, somewhere near Istanbul, modern-day Istanbul, near the Black Sea. There the British soldiers were fighting a war. It was around 1854, I think. There many soldiers were wounded. They were neglected. The injured soldiers. Uh, but see, when we started to gather 30 nurses went there, as said by the government, they treated the war victims so well. She said she was a very good writer too. She wrote in her book that more soldiers died because of uh, diseases than due to bullets. Those days, typhoid was a terrible disease. Cholera was there. The century was there. And more important, lack of ventilation, she said. Ventilation is necessary for easy breathing. A body needs pure air. When the military barracks were not properly ventilated, when they kept sick soldiers there, it worsened. So she taught all these things. Every night, for this nightingale made a round. When all the other nurses slept, she was holding a lamb in her hand. Then she inquired about the health of the patients so gently, so politely that people came to know God also and good service. We are doing service to mankind. Lord Jesus, what did he do? Let's take an example from his life. He tried to cure the body as well as the spirit. Physical ailments, he was God himself, he had the power to cure. And his disciples too, in the name of Jesus, they rebuked sickness and sickness went. The lady with the flowing blood, she too was healed. On the way to Jericho, he healed Bartimaeus who was blind for her mother's womb. In Sri Lanka, government is so uh, meticulous, particularly concerned about people's health. I went for a training in 2013. A beautiful Presley Queen. We government care for our citizens from womb to tomb. Understand? Women's for mother's womb. Mothers will be made healthy, given proper diet. Two men symmetry. Till she dies. Even after that they take care. The body should be properly buried in under hygienic conditions. Uh, there shouldn't be any any uh, lamps there. Proper medication, proper embalmment. Even when dead bodies are not taken proper care of, counter, it can be counterproductive. More diseases can come out of stinking bodies. So, nurse's duty is to care for womb to tomb, from beginning to end. Even after people's death, we have to take care. You heard about the Hippocratic Oath. Heard about it? It has nothing to do with hypocrisy. There was a man called Hippocrates. He was a Greek man. Socrates, Hippocrates. That's the name, the Greek name. He lived in from 450 BC. BC, during BC's time, the years were counted down. From 450 to 375. Hippocrates. Now, he championed for healthcare so much that in the American uh, nursing colleges, they take the Hippocratic Oath. 
before marriage we take old. Nurses graduated, they are about to, about to be passed out. Before they pass out, they were made to take Hippocratic oath. What is that? It's written, God forbids killing, God forbids abortion. A nurse should never harm anybody, knowingly or unknowingly. A nurse should never be partial, respecting some people, looking down upon some people, should not do anything to please anybody under any circumstance. And they also take out, I shall never give deadly drugs to anybody. Even if a gunman threatens me, I will not serve a deadly drug. You know deadly drugs that can kill people. That's a part of the oath, and it has mainly to do with not killing people. It's a commandment of God. Exodus chapter 20, 10 commandment. Thou shalt not kill. You should remember that. Some people make excuse. Oh, inside the mother's womb a child is still. Still not a person, still not a human being. But uh, right from six weeks, after six weeks of conception, experts say the child is having the features of uh, a person of a human being. So, taking abortion, even in a modest form, tantamounts to murder. Thou shalt not murder. You should get that very clear. Apart from that, when a woman goes for abortion, side effects are there. Mothers have bleeding, mental problem, all oh, full of guilt. Why do I do this in the present? Actually, it's a, it's a form of men. Men are putting pressure on a woman to abort. <laughs> so, women should be careful. It's against the word of God. Hippocratic oath we may not take, or we may take here. We may have some other uh, similar oath here. Whatever. You should say, we are Christians. God forbids murder. I cannot do this. Then, Nursing profession. It's a, a profession closest to the thoughts of Jesus. Bible commentators said before Jesus was born for, for three, uh, for about uh, three years, there were lots of uh, lots of sick people, the lame, the blind. Some people were questioning why why were so many sick people doing. Jesus' time during his ministry on earth, commentator said, sick people were allowed to be born by God so that the Son of God may be glorified. His power may be so kissed. He healed so many people. Because of healing, the Pharisees, Sadducees, those who were speaking against him, criticizing him. They were marveled. They wondered, oh, this man must be some, someone extraordinary. So Jesus cared for the physical life, but as he ministered to the Samaritan woman, he also cared for the spiritual life. Whoever he met, God changed forever. Bartimaeus the blind man. Jesus could have said, when the blind man shouted him, Mark chapter 10, verse 47. Son of David, son of David. Jesus could sense the fate in that man. Because in those days, Jesus was, Jesus has not resurrected. People were considering him another human being. Some were so critical about him. Oh, he is wine by a beer. He is a drunkard. Uh, he's a glutton, one who takes too much food. When he talk about having the bread of life, people criticize him. When he talk about take my flesh during the Lord's Supper, eat my flesh, they accuse him. He's a cannibal. Cannibal means eating human flesh. You know, African countries, cannibals are stealing.
caught, tried to corner him, tried to blame him and give him a bad name. But what the people who could see could not see, those who were having perfect eyes could not see Jesus was the Son of God. The blind man, Bartimaeus, could see, Oh, Son of David, Son of David, have mercy upon me. That was great. Jesus saw the faith in him. Old Testament prophecy said that someone, the Messiah will come and take over the throne of David. He shall sit in the throne of David, that's the Messiah. I don't know how, but the blind man could, without reading anything, he could know that Jesus was the Son of God, Son of David. Those who have not met the Lord, you must know that Jesus wants you to confess whatever you want to say. Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do? Jesus knew what Bartimaeus wanted. He wanted to see. He wanted his eyes to be open. But Jesus wanted Bartimaeus to say the same thing from his own mouth. Say with you. You will say, Lord, I need this. Lord, please forgive me. Romans chapter 10, verse 10, clearly says. You must confess to be saved. Confess, confess. He wants to hear from our own words, from our own mouth. Bartimaeus said, Lord, I want to see. I want eyesight. Go, you'll be healed. He was healed. So, being in this profession, it's an extension of the ministry of Jesus, medical profession especially, serving people, caring for people, the sick, the needy. The Bible says in Exodus, poor people, sickly people, needy people will always be there. There will be no end. They will be there. This profession especially. Advocate, for example, the legal profession. They always fight for people, people's cases, criminal cases, or civil cases. They always meet uh, bad people, fight for bad people. As nurses, being in the profession, you will always be meeting sickly people, needy people. When you find a profession too tough, kind of remember Jesus that you are part of his ministry. You are doing what he could not do. Matthew chapter 20, Jesus commissioned his disciples, go ye to the world. So you, Jesus was not sending the 12 disciples only. He was referring very futuristic things. Later, disciples will go spread the gospel. Those who had the gospel will be converted. They were working in different offices, different institutions. They should also go. Believers should go out. You have a very good opportunity to witness to the patients. When people are sickly, they are ready to accept Jesus. When they are healthy, they feel so proud. They don't want to hear. So integrity is required. Everything should be together. You should think one thing, hear one thing in the church, and do another thing in your hospital. That's not it. Things will be integrated, integrated. There was a lady whose life has no integrity. One day she was drunk and she was putting on a very savvy dress. Hair was not combed properly. So she was squatting on the floor. One friend came, hey lady, what are you doing? Then she noticed that lady was putting her ring, ring which they have changed with the husband during wedding. She was putting the ring in on the middle finger. Actually, this is the ring finger. Ring finger is this. She was putting on another finger, not in the ring finger. The friend was noticing, Lady, why are you putting your ring on the wrong finger? The lady replied, Because I married the wrong man. <laughs> That's not integrity. See, many people think like that. 
boys also, men also think, girls also think, I should have married a better woman, just no matching thing in my life. You ask God first, Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10. God says, I'm the God who can tell the end from the beginning. Even though you are not married, who you will marry, how will your marriage end up, God can foretell. He knows everything in advance. So just pray, get converted, pray, seek guidance from the Bible, from your pastor, godly people, God will surely let you know. There's a way of choosing husbands also. The Lemon Fellowship when Dr. Job was here. See, he sought the will of God. Lord, I'm going to I'm going to a nursing college. So you tell me who is my future partner. That day God wonderfully revealed to him. God heard his prayer. All the students were on holiday. Only one student was here in the hostel. So, so he knew that was the woman. He married and they were serving the Lord together. They died suddenly one or two years back, one of them. Uh, they came to him Paul and suffered more than 10 years. We all were touched by their testimonies. God can forget. He is good, he is handsome, he is a salaried man. Don't calculate like that. <laughs> Boys also should not calculate how much the girl will bring from her father's house. That should not be, that is greed. That is hidden, hidden culture. You should look at the intrinsic value. Long sack tree, for example, if you cut it and seal it as firewood, you will not get much. Oh, 500, 10, 1000, not even that. But let the long sack tree grow. Every year you are gaining 10,000, 20,000. Women also like that. Where do you steal? Women who wear do. She may not be very beautiful, very smartly dressed, may not be fashionable, but the intrinsic way do you steal? Boys also should pray, girls also should pray. Well, marriage is a bit in heaven, it's safe. No one, no one will be left and married according to God's plan. But you have to find out. If you are not converted, God not, will not reveal. That's integrity. What you think, what you do in your profession, everything should be integrated. Not like a lady who said, I married the wrong man. Marrying a wrong woman, wrong man, there's no peace. Always quarrel, quarrel. Neighbors will hear. Integrity in your personal life, integrity in your profession are correlated. They're very important. Matthew 7, 12, 6. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Dear, do unto others what you want others to do to you. Very clear. Nursing profession, especially you should remember that. Serving the people. When you are caring for some people, you are fulfilling the wish of God Jesus. What he wants to do, what he could not do, you are fulfilling that. God will be happy. He is alive today. He is watching us. So, you are in a profession which keeps you plenty of opportunity to serve people. In a way, you are very lucky. And compassion, that's necessary. Love is universal then sympathy is something lesser than compassion. Compassion means trying to put yourself in the position of a suffering man or woman. Compassion. Jesus had that quality. Oh, he was preaching the word of God. The Beatitudes, Matthew chapter 5, 5,000 people were hearing the sermon from Jesus. He could understand. Oh, they must be feeling hungry, thirsty. He blessed her. Two loaves and five fists multiplied. He fed the people. Today's this miracle may not take place. But if we pray sincerely, the power of prayer. George Muller preached on the power, uh, power of prayer. The power of faith. The power of prayer. prayer. He wrote a book, a book title. George Muller was a big man of faith. He was a Prussian. He opened, opened orphanages. He took care of more than 12,000 orphans. 
He always sought the will of God. He didn't ask for donation. He didn't ask for any help. Once 500 in an orphanage, 500 children were hungry. They were banging the devil. Oh, give us food, give us food. Charles <coughs> Moses said, you cannot do like that. All of you pray. God will give you. It was around 1885, more than 100 years back. God will be giving you, providing you, but you should have a grateful heart. Let us thank God in advance. Let us pray. They prayed. Just as they finished praying, a cart, a horse cart was being taken from one place to another, just in front of their orphanage. The wheel of the cart broke down. It was carrying food for a star hotel. Because the wheel of the cart broke, the vehicle got stuck. The horse cart got stuck. Then the rider was shouting, Is there anybody to help me? Come and help me and take the food. They got, went and helped and they say, I cannot carry this without my wheel cart. So you just take the food. God provided wonderful. The same way, some of you may be hidden from big, good families, good families in the sense, rich families, not so rich, middle class, poor families, or whatever. Trust God for your needs, even for your monthly fees, annual fees, even for going for further studies. Those who pass off from this nursing schools went out to under protests and other places for further studies, even to my deputies. Some I heard some of them saying. So even for further studies, even for placement, your career. Nursing also has got a wide range of career choice. Some may work in government departments, some may work in private clinics, and allied services are there. Whatever. Just pray. God will guide you. God will bless you. Thank you. Let's pray. Lord God, it's only because of thee that we can share the word. We can consider one another brothers and sisters. Thank you for the love that flowed out of Mount Calvary. Your, cruc your crucifixion is still supplying power, <coughs> spiritual power, spiritual light to this world which is being ruled by evil forces. Thank you Lord for the power that you gave us. Thank you for the committed, dedicated students here. Give them wisdom and understanding in choice of career in choice of profession, that they may not commit mistakes. Thank you for this wonderful fellowship with our humanist Lord. Make each and every one of us a potent witness, an effective witness, wherever you place us. Thank you for the word. Bless your word in Jesus' holy name.